so shortly after I got this rifle, I did a quick video, just a little demo, and it quickly became uh, one of my more popular videos. So I decided to do a full review of this Smith & Wesson MMP-10. That's my first review, so you have to give me a little slack. But uh, just an overview. Smith & Wesson MMP-10. It's an AR-10 platform. Chambered in 308. I'm a big fan of the MMP series of rifles. Uh, I have several. So, obviously, I've already made several modifications to the rifle, uh, for better or for worse. I've added the I've added the Barska 24 Power Sniper Scope. I'm not big on spending a whole lot of money on my optics, so kind of got the most bang for my buck with that one. Uh, Magpul PRS AR-10 uh, rifle stock. Magpul front end. Uh, obviously I've added the bipod. I've also added this small backup red dot sight I've been experimenting with. Um, had it out to the range and put quite a few rounds through it. And uh, so far it's performed it. uh, better than expected. It's the first time I've actually used one of these AR-10 style rifles in the 308. Do a close up here just to show the MMP-10 features full ambidextrous controls as you can see with the safety lever and the slide release on the right side here. Standard magazine latch. And when we flip to the other side here you can see the uh, magazine release as well as your standard bolt release and safety mechanism. Also show the uh, it's got a little contoured grooves here which make it kind of nice especially since I'm shooting from the bipod usually from the table or prone position. And you can see here the gas block the short rail on top if you wanted to have uh, standard iron sights or some sort of flip up you can mount your front one there the, uh, the barrel is thinned out I'm assuming to uh, reduce weight it's got a decent muzzle brake here on the end um, I've, heard, I've heard a lot of people say they don't like it I don't know how much it does for recoil but I like the way it looks Now a couple of things, since obviously I've already got the rifle pretty much built to the way I want it. I lean more towards the cosmetics. I'm a big fan of the Magpul accessories. If you've seen them on some of my other rifles. Uh, the rifle did come with a 10 round uh, metal magazine. Uh, I've been using these Magpul 20 rounders. Um, and they've worked flawlessly, no problems with locking the bolt to the rear. Um, the Magpul handguards, uh, I read on a lot of forums that people were having trouble getting them to fit, uh, and some people have actually been making modifications to the heat shield uh, to get it to fit around the barrel. Um, the only problem I had with getting them on is that this piece here had to be pushed down as far as it would go to get the the handguards to fit in over it. Um, it was a little tricky, took a little muscle, but uh, was able to get them on there with zero modification. The heat shield is probably rubbing on the barrel, but I'm not too worried about that. I don't think it's affecting the accuracy at all. Maybe some scratches but I'm not too worried about that as I, I don't take them on and off very often. PRS, Magpul PRS buttstock kind of presented its own set of challenges. Uh, the rifle originally came with a carbine length adjustable stock um, so in order to get this to fit on there 
had to replace the buffer tube spring and buffer with rifle length pieces. Um, on this setup I used DPMS parts. The tube, spring, and buffer are all from DPMS. Uh, I figured they would be the best bet, best quality. Um, got them on there. Finding the right stock is another challenge. Uh, there's a lot of AR-15 style PRS stocks out there which have a longer cheek piece. The AR-10 style has a shorter cheek piece to allow for the clearance of the longer charging handle the AR-10 platform. And uh, came across this one by luck. The guy was selling it online, advertised it as an AR-15 style. Luckily from the pictures I could tell that it was an AR-10. I was able to pick that up. Now I found out later that the entire buffer assembly is proprietary with the Smith & Wesson rifle. So, unfortunately, when I swapped out the parts, uh, DPMS rifle length tube, rifle length spring, and rifle length buffer started having some cycling issues, uh, especially with the NATO 7.62 rounds for short stroking, and uh, I was getting bolt overrides uh, about every three or four rounds. Uh, with significant lubrication, I could usually get it to go through about half a magazine before it would start jamming up. I had better luck with the 308s. Um, they were cycling properly, but the bolt wasn't coming back far enough to actually lock back on an empty magazine. I started using some 308 rounds that were higher pressure, uh, higher muzzle velocity, um, had a little more kick to them and uh, everything seems to be working. Um, the rounds I'm using, uh, they advertise muzzle velocities about 2800 feet per second and those seem to be cycling perfectly, locking the bolt back, no jams. Uh, I also make sure and lube up the buffer assembly significantly before I take it out to the range and that seems to help quite a bit. So like I said earlier, I've been experimenting with this backup sight. Um, got a fairly cheap sight mark mini red dot here. Um, I like the idea of being able to just cant the rifle to the side for short range engagements. Um, not sure if I actually like it. I got a quick video, but I was using those NATO rounds and they're jamming up on me so I didn't really get a good run off of it. Not sure if I'm going to keep it on there or not. Now the scope is a Barska 6 to 24 power by 40 sniper scope with illuminated mil dot reticle. Uh, obviously you can see it's got the target knobs here. Uh, which makes it really great for adjusting to different ranges and being able to reset it back to zero when you're done. The illumination works great. It's a cheaper scope. Uh, I think I paid less than $200 for it. Uh, some people don't like the Barskas because they're cheap, but I've actually had pretty good luck with them. I should also point out that due to the size of the scope, I added an enlarged charging handle release uh, and that helped out significantly. I was having a hard time getting a hold of that charging handle with the uh, scope in the way. Now with the rifle set up the way it is, um, I've been able to shoot it out to about 300 yards. That's about as far as I can get on the range that we got out there. You see me shooting on all the time. And with the scope dialed in just right, I've been able to consistently take out a soda cans at about 300 yards which is a pretty decent shot so all in all um, the rifle works great if you use the right type of ammunition with the setup that I've got um, hopefully one of these days I'll find a longer range and we can get some uh, some more distance on those shots and see how well it does